Hey, what's going on? It's Justin Dickmeyer from engineerandtrainingexam.com and in this video we will review partial derivatives. When given a function of two variables, we can take the partial derivative of that function by concentrating exclusively on changing one of the variables at a time while holding the remaining variables fixed and treating them like constants. So in essence, determining the derivatives of a function of more than one variable is done essentially the same way as taking derivatives of a single variable. So to compute the partial derivative of the function of two variables x, y with respect to x would be done simply by holding all the y's as constant and differentiating all the x's. And the same goes for finding the partial derivative of the uh, two variable function and with respect to y. We would simply hold all the x's constant and differentiate all the y's. So let's il illustrate this real quick through an, an example. Let's uh, find the partial derivatives of the of the function that has uh, two variables x y, two x squared y to the third. So the first thing, let's find the partial derivative uh, res with respect to x. Now all we need to do is hold the uh, function y to the third constant and differentiate x squared and we get 4xy to the third. Now doing the same, finding the partial derivative uh, with respect to y, we just hold the x squared constant and we uh, differentiate the y function and we end up getting 6x squared y squared. So as you can see taking the derivatives of the functions, uh, partial derivatives, are not going to be equal to one another. Now these two partial derivatives are sometimes referred to as first order partial derivatives. Just as with functions of one variable, we can have as many derivatives, uh, many derivatives in all orders. We should note that the notation for partial derivatives is different than that for derivatives of functions of a single variable. With functions of a single variable, we were able to denote the derivative with a single prime. If you remember, it was just f prime of x, f double prime of x, and so forth. However, with partial derivatives, we will always need to remember the variable that we are differentiating for. And so we will subscript the variable that we differenti differentiated with respect to. So in this case, we're differentiating with respect to x. So I subscripted the x, and in this case, we subscripted y because we were uh, concerned with the y functions. Now, before we go any further, we should probably reference the formal definition of a partial derivative as well as some alternative notation. Now, the formal definitions of the partial derivatives are this. Let's start a new, oops, let's start a new page here. We got say we have a function of two variables, variables, the partial derivative with respect to x of a function fxy would be fx plus hy minus fxy divided by h and the uh, partial derivative of y of the d two variable function would be equal to fx y plus h minus f x y divided by h. Now we could use these formal uh, equations to determine the uh, partial derivatives, but of course we, we don't want to. We just want to become better experienced so we can quickly do it on the fly. So now let's take a quick look at some of the possible alternative notations for partial derivatives we may see or already be familiar with. So given a function, say z is equal to f x y, the following are all equivalent notations. 
So the derivative of, uh, of this function with respect to x is also equal to uh, fx, that's a subscript of x. Uh, we got this little notation, partial derivative of uh, f with respect to x, or we got the partial derivative of the function fxy with respect to x and uh, we got z subscript x and so forth. All these are uh, all these are derivative or all these are equivalent um, notations for uh, any given function and the same goes for y. We could write all these uh, out for y as well. It just be y is the subscript there and so forth. So those are all equivalent notations. If you see any of those, uh, they're, they're looking for the partial derivative of some function. So let's work some examples here. Let's find the partial derivatives of the function. Two variable function, fxy is equal to x to the fourth plus six square root of y minus 10. So first take the derivative with, res with respect to x. And remember that as we do so, all the y's will be treated as constants. So the partial derivative with respect to x of this function is equal to 4x to the third. Notice that the second and third term dif differentiated to 0 in this case. It should be clear why the third term differentiated to 0 because that's a constant. Now, uh, this is also, though, the reason why the second term did uh, dif differentiated to zero as well, because remember, we're treating any y variable as a constant, so that differentiates out. So now let's uh, take a look at uh, the partial derivative with respect to y. Now, this would simply be, once again, holding the x and uh, the x terms constant and uh, in this case once again those are going to differentiate out to zero so we get the final answer as 6 over 2y to the negative one half which is also equal to uh, 3 divided by the square root of y so those are our two partial derivatives with respect to the uh, x and y now let's look at another example. This one's a little bit more complicated. Let's say that we have the uh, function t to the seventh ln natural log of s squared plus 9 divided by t to the third minus seventh root of s to the fourth. Now, this looks pretty complicated, but uh, in fact, it's not all that hard. I just wanted to write out a hard function or hard-looking function and show you that it's still fairly simple to uh, find the partial derivative of. So let's find first find the partial derivative of uh, this function with respect to s. And let's use this notation. Partial derivative of h with respect to s is going to be and once again we're going to hold all the so we're going to hold all the t values uh, constant so we got t to the seventh 2s over s squared minus 4 seventh s raised to the 3 sevenths which also simplifies to 2t to the seventh divided by s minus 4 7 s to the negative 3 7 so notice how the second term completely uh, went away and uh, we just found the derivatives of the remaining terms and uh, so that's our derivative of HST with respect to s now let's find the partial derivative of H with respect to T so we're going to hold all the s terms 
uh, constant. And since this this last term, all it has is s, that's going to get uh, go by. It's going to be a zero. And so we're just concerned with uh, finding the derivative of these two functions right here. And that ends up being 7t to the 6 natural log of s squared minus 27t to the negative 4. So that's, uh, once again, looks like a harder function to par find partial derivatives to, but it's the same old-fashioned, same routine. So now what about functions of three variables? How do, we, how do we find the partial derivative of a function of three variables? Well, let's work through an example to show you how it's not much harder. Uh, it's actually fairly simple. Let's say that we have a function g, x, y, and z. It's a three variable function. And the function is x sine of y divided by z squared. Now we need to be careful to not use the quotient rule when it doesn't need to be used. In this case, we do have a quotient. However, since the x's and y's only appear in the numerator and the z's only appear in the denominator, this, is really, this really isn't a quotient rule problem. So let's do the derivatives with respect to x and y first. In both these cases, the z's are constant, and so the denominator in this is a constant, and so we don't really need to worry too much about it. So the derivatives are this, say g of the function, th three variable function with respect to x is going to be sine of y over z squared. Now all we did was differentiate x which comes out to one, one. so uh, that partial derivative with respect to x is going to be sine, sine y divided by z squared. Now the same, uh, finding the partial derivative with respect to y so all we're doing is holding the x and the z squared uh, constant and differentiating sine y. We find that the partial der derivative with respect to y is equal to x cosine of y divided by z squared. Now in this case of differentiation with respect to z, we can avoid the quotient rule by rewriting, rewriting the function. So we have g x, y, z can be rewritten as x sine of y z to the negative square. Now this is simple. Now all we need to do is find uh, the uh, partial derivative with respect to z by uh, just uh, using our, our standard uh, derivative rules. So we got the, the partial derivative with respect to z is equal to negative 2 x sine of y z to the negative 3 which also can we can rewrite that in the quotient as negative 2x sine of y divided by z to the third so that's it it's uh, not much harder uh, you just continue to hold the constants that you not that you aren't differentiating as con or the variables that you're not differentiating as constants, and uh, just uh, differentiate the ones that you are looking for. So that's all there is uh, to that. I uh, hope you guys found that review uh, helpful. If you guys have any questions, head on over to engineerandtrainingexam.com and check out some more videos. Spend some time over there getting reacquainted with your studies. Sign up for my free EIT preparation boot camp and get on the track to, uh, to passing this exam now. Um, you guys can do it. And if you guys have any questions, again, don't hesitate to contact me because I'm here to help and uh, guide you along the way. So until next time, you guys take care. All right? Bye.